Kappa immunoglobulin free light chains measured in cerebrospinal fluid can perform just as well as the analysis of IgG oligoclonal bands as a laboratory test for the diagnosis of multiple sclerosis. I'm Ruba Sadeh, Research Fellow in Neuroimmunology in the Department of Laboratory Medicine and Pathology at Mayo Clinic. Hi, and I am Maria Wilrich. I am an Associate Professor of Laboratory Medicine and Pathology at Mayo Clinic, and we are both authors of the paper CSF Kappa Free Light Chains Cutoff Validation for Diagnosis of Multiple Sclerosis, which will appear in Mayo Clinic Proceedings. In this publication, we studied over 1,300 individuals. There were about 12% of multiple sclerosis diagnosed patients in the study, and the remainder were non-MS. Several patients had conditions with central nervous system inflammation, and several presented with symptoms such as headache, migraines, infection, cancer, among others. The 1,300 individuals were divided into two groups. First, we had a retrospective cohort, where about 700 patients were included. In this group, all individuals had oligoclonal banding, tests done, as well as CAP in the CSF, plus several other lab tests, imaging, and a clinical diagnosis in their health record was reviewed. The question we asked was, is CAP and CSF equivalent to oligoclonal banding for the diagnosis of multiple sclerosis? We found out that at a concentration of 0.1 milligrams per deciliter for CAP had similar sensitivity and specificity as oligoclonal banding for the diagnosis of MS, without the need for a paired serum and being a much easier test to run in the laboratory. Then we used the second group of subjects in a prospective cohort of 650 subjects. In this group, we tried to validate the cutoff value of 0.1 milligram per deciliter found in the retrospective cohort. And it had the same sensitivity as a legal clonal banding, so the cutoff value was verified. So kappa measurement in CSF is a relatively new marker for multiple sclerosis. And there are different studies out there that have been published trying to decide what is the best medical decision point for the diagnosis of uh, multiple sclerosis with this new marker. Based on our study, we identified the optimal performance of kappa concentration measured in CSF uh, in a very large U.S.-based population, and with that, we were able to launch a profile of multiple sclerosis tests using this new marker. Our finding introduces an alternative test to oligoclonal bands to the arsenal of tests used to diagnose multiple sclerosis. At a time when healthcare workers are faced with labor shortages, this change is welcome as it presents an automated and cost-effective alternative to a manual labor-intensive test. And then if you were to ask us, uh, what is this finding? What does this mean for patients? Well, only about 100 laboratories in the country currently perform testing for oligoclonal banding because it's so complex. So, and sending out samples to reference labs takes time and effort. Hopefully, this test is able to provide a faster answer to patients waiting for a diagnosis or a rule in, rule out of multiple sclerosis, and it has the potential to bring the diagnosis closer to home for those patients, as many more labs in the country would have the capacity and the capability to bring up an automated test such as CAPA in CSF. There are always next steps uh, when we are doing research, especially when we are dealing with multiple sclerosis. And in this, this field of finding new markers, such as the Kappa free light chain in CSF, one next step is to review how it performs in other conditions, other autoimmune central nervous system conditions, and understand if there is a role for a combination of tests that can differentiate multiple sclerosis from other conditions that would be very relevant for the field. And in addition, there is a second very large effort being led primarily by Dr. Deisenhammer and Dr. Hagen from the Medical University of Innsbruck, that is to try to include th these new markers, these uh, alternative tests, such as kappa free light chains and CSF, in the diagnostic criteria for multiple sclerosis. This will bring testing closer to routine and closer to patients. So to read the details uh, and all the data analysis we did to find out the performance of Kappa free light chains in CSF, please come read the, the full article in Mayo Clinic Proceedings. And thank you for listening to our video today. We hope you found this presentation from the content of our website valuable. Our journal's mission is to promote the best interests of patients 
by advancing the knowledge and professionalism of the physician community. If you are interested in more information about us, our homepage is www.mayoclinicproceedings.org. There you'll find access to information for our social media content, such as additional videos on our YouTube channel or journal updates on Facebook. You can also follow us on Twitter. More information about Healthcare at Mayo Clinic is available at www.mayoclinic.org. This video content is copyrighted by Mayo Foundation for Medical Education and Research.